Hello! It's the pageant nerd here with my full review of the 69th Miss Universe held in Hollywood, Florida on May 16, 2021. Officially the 2020 edition because, well, COVID. A few weeks have elapsed since the pageant itself, so I can assume you know what happened. And if you've seen my previous videos, it's highly likely you want my nerdy analysis, not a straightforward review. If this isn't the case, here's a very quick rundown, but then I've got a lot to cover. Here we go. To 74 entrants this year, the lowest since 2003 due to you know why. Some format changes with the top 21, the most semi-finalist ever, including a fan-voted delegate, Vietnam. After three years, regional spots and wildcards were dumped, the other 20 women selected on their merits. No quick chat with the host or opening statements from all the semi-finalists. Straight to swimsuits, a cut to top 10 for gowns, and two rounds of Q&A for the top five. No top three after five straight years. Some fan favorites didn't perform as well as expected. Philippines stopped in the top 21. Puerto Rico and Thailand in the top 10. Some didn't place at all. Four Latinas in the top five. One of them took her country's third crown, making some huge pageant history along the way. Okay, now we're all caught up. Let's get to the main event. As I just alluded to, there were many shock exclusions this year, but none more so than South Africa. After three consecutive top two finishes, including two crowns, expectations were super high on Natasha Hubert. After well-received prelims performances in swimsuit and gown, it was assumed the eloquent Hubert would have nailed interview, cruised into the top 21, and been a title contender for the Rainbow Nation once again. It wasn't to be, with so many of us, including Natasha herself and her all-conquering national creative director, Werner Vessels, wondering what happened. It was extremely hard standing there and knowing that South Africa did so well for three years. Um, but I gave everything and I'm proud of myself for standing there and I overcame so many things that I struggled with for such a long time. The lady chosen by our panel of judges to be the second runner-up is... Natasha! I won't suggest theories on many topics today, instead sticking to the facts. But what I suspect occurred here had to do with Natasha's selection method. As second runner-up in Miss South Africa 2020, it was decided after the pageant that the winner would go to Miss World, the first runner-up to Miss Supranational, and Natasha to Miss Universe. One can't help but think this didn't sit well with the Miss Universe organization, playing third fiddle, not only to its eternal rival Miss World, but also to a new mid-tier pageant like Miss Supranational. Friends! While South Africa's fall from grace was nothing short of stunning, it's surprisingly common for the reigning nation to go unplaced the following year. It's in fact happened 33 times in total, a 48.5% failure rate, if you will, represented by the missing flags here. That includes three times for Venezuela after their 1979, 81 and 2009 crowns. It occurred seven consecutive times in the late 80s and early 90s, and nine times in total since 2000. With so many other exclusions of uber-hyped delegates, Canada, Chile, Nepal, Romania, Venezuela, who's gonna be? El Leave your thoughts below. Ultimately, 
pageant fan buzz and hype differs from what the Miss Universe organisation is looking for, no matter how much we try and predict what that is. On the flip side, Myanmar's first ever Miss Universe placement was a wonderfully pleasant surprise, especially given its current political situation. We wish Candy all the best as she establishes her new life in the USA. The Latin American delegates were the main beneficiaries of no regional allocations. Their representation in the Miss Universe semi-finals dipped as low as 20% in 2018, but they stormed back to prominence this time around with nine of the top 21. That's excluding USA, Jamaica and Curacao, also from the Americas. Latinas made up six of the top 10 and four of the top five the first time that happened since 2013. Consecutive placements for Peru, Colombia and Dominican Republic. Three top tens in a row for Puerto Rico, consecutive top threes for Mexico and a second top ten placement in three years for Costa Rica. There was plenty to celebrate. The three longest active streaks at Miss Universe were extended thanks to the efforts of Rabia Mateo, Julia Gama and Asia Branch. The Philippines made it 11 in a row with Mateo's top 21 finish, moving her country into equal fourth place all time alongside India. Something to note is that India's 11 consecutive placements between 1992 and 2002 were achieved when there were just 10 semi-finalists. So, if we're looking at consecutive top 10s, it's India 11, Philippines 9. But placing is placing, regardless of the format de jour. So officially, they're both on 11 consecutive placements. Given India also placed in 1990, I wanted to see if they would have had 13 straight placements if there was a top 15 or top 20 at the time. Sadly, India's delegate in 1991 came 48th in prelims. Brazil and the USA both made it 10 in a row. The first time Brazil has achieved this and USA's third such accomplishment. The USA holds the longest and third longest streaks of all time, Venezuela in second. Thailand made it an even half dozen placements thanks to Amanda Obdam. They're the only nation to have made the top 10 for each of the past six years. Indonesia, Puerto Rico and Vietnam placed for a third straight year, a record streak for Vietnam. Sadly, we saw no African delegates place for the first time since 2014, somewhat surprising after an African victory two of the past three years. For completeness, here's a look at the continental breakdown of the semi-finalists at Miss Universe 2020. While each year, some Miss Universe contestants have inevitably competed in other international competitions beforehand, the class of 2020 was unique in that the eventual top three had all featured prominently in an earlier major competition. Peru's Janik Maceta was third runner-up at Miss Supranational 2019. Julia Gama of Brazil placed top 11 at Miss World 2014. And Mexico's Andrea Meza was first runner-up at Miss World 2017. More on that a little later, but here's an in-depth look at the top five. With four of the top five, at the Q&A rounds, there was effectively an 80% chance we'd see the first Latina Miss Universe in the IMG era, which began in 2015. Thanks to Kimberly Jimenez, the Dominican Republic returned to the top five for the first time since its first runner-up finish in 2009. It could be a comeback for the Caribbean nation, having also won in 2003 and placed second runner-up in 2005 and 2008. Likewise, India made a welcome return to the top five after an even longer gap. Adeline Castellino finished third runner-up 
and while she was picked to win the title by many pundits, including yours truly, her incredible efforts nonetheless generated immense pride in her fans and raised hopes of an Indian renaissance at this universe. India is a two-time winner in 1994 and 2000 and had most recently placed in the top five in 2001. Peru had its first top five finish since winning the crown all the way back in 1957 and Janik Maceta and Kellen Rivera before her are the first Peruvian women to have consecutive top 10 placements at Miss Universe. But to put it bluntly, Janik should feel disappointed with her second runner-up finish, having delivered two incredible answers in the top five Q&A rounds. More on that shortly. But with Brazil and Mexico standing virtually hand in hand as the final two, you could tell that winning this title would have been the fulfillment of a lifelong dream for either woman. I think about Miss Universe since I wake up in the morning till the time I go to bed at night and I wrote here, one in seven billion, it can be me. In the end, Brazil narrowly missed out on its third crown after victories in 1963 and 68. Their sixth first runner-up finish, putting them alongside the likes of Colombia, also with two crowns and Venezuela, which has seven titles. The USA has the most first runner-up finishes at Miss Universe, with nine to go with its record eight crowns. Looking at the nine countries that have reached the Miss Universe top two at least four times, Brazil and Colombia have the lowest success rate, 25%. And in a strange coincidence, Mario Lopez has now seen Brazil finish first runner-up in both of his stints as Miss Universe co-host. It also occurred in 2007 in Mexico City. Before we talk about our new Miss Universe, I thought I'd look at my own success rate, that being my final predictions. I released my placement predictions after prelims and on the eve of finals night. That video was by far my most watched ever in its first 24 hours and its subject matter also meant it was by far my most disliked. That aside, I correctly predicted 14 of the 21 semi-finalists, with four of my five bubbling up delegates also qualifying. I missed only Dominican Republic, Argentina and Curaçao. That translated into five of the top 10, and more excitedly, for me at least, I correctly predicted four of the top five. True, I didn't get their final placements right, but Mexico, Brazil, Peru and India all made it. Hey, that's the entire top four. Yay me. Anyway, enough of the self-congratulations. Let's check out our brand new Miss Universe. Congratulations to Andrea Meza. Take your first walk as Miss Universe. And with Andrea Meza's win, Mexico had its third Miss Universe crown. 10 years after Jimena Navarrete's win, and one day short of exactly 30 years since Lupita Jones's maiden triumph. Mexico is now in rare company, one of only seven nations to have won three or more Miss Universe crowns. They're one of five nations to have won multiple titles since the turn of the millennium. In second place, Mexico. As I've covered in my previous clips, Andrea Meza indeed created history by becoming the first woman to play second at Miss World in 2017 and then win Miss Universe. The winner of the 69th Miss Universe competition is Viva Mexico! That beats Michelle McLean and Catriona Gray, who followed top five Miss World finishes with a Miss Universe crown. Conversely, three women won Miss World after a first runner-up result at Miss Universe. Check that out in my video on Miss Universe Miss World crossover queens. But Andrea Meza is in a crossover league of her own, 
and now one of only four women to have reached the top two at both Miss World and Miss Universe. Felicidades. When did a dream of becoming Miss Universe come into play? Well, it started when I was around 15 years old, when Jimena Navarrete won Miss Universe. I used to think that Mexican people were not able to get to these places and to be in these high positions. And after she won, she changed the mindset that I had. Some other quick facts for you. Mexico reached the top three in consecutive years for the first time ever. And according to Not a Missologist, it's the seventh time in Miss Universe history a country has won the crown after a second runner-up finish the year before. The past few pageant seasons have prominently featured Mexico, not only with Vanessa Ponce's Miss World crown in 2018 and Andrea Mez's second place there in 2017 and 2020 Miss Universe title, Mexico also finished first runner-up at Miss International and Miss Grand International, both in 2019. With Mexico bookending the decade with Miss Universe wins, in between there were two wins apiece for the Philippines and South Africa, and one win each for Angola, USA, Venezuela, Colombia and France. And speaking of decades, We've now had Miss Universes win the crown in a red dress in the decade-ending years of 2000, 2010 and 2020. Despite the fact there were no African semi-finalists this year, something interesting to note is that the first two Mexican Miss Universes both crowned African women as their successors. Hopefully this means we'll see African queens take centre stage once again at Miss Universe 2021. It would be remiss of me to ignore the elephant in the room, that being the somewhat mixed reaction to the selection of Mexico as the winner. While it was predicted the 69th Miss Universe would see a Latina win, and there's no denying Andrea Meza will be a wonderful Miss Universe, but after the final two Q&A rounds, there was a general consensus that Peru had surged to victory. Miss Peru, what would you say to the women watching tonight who are currently experiencing sexual or domestic abuse? I will tell them that I admire their strength, that they're survivors, and that I've been there too. I became the hero of my own story. That's why I advocate to save little girls from being victims. They're survivors, they're heroes. They have the power, and don't ever, ever make anyone silence your voice. Demi, my girl, it is officially crunch time. Who is your winner? Ah, uh, Peru, she's undeniable. She is incredible. Paulina, what about you? I love Peru too. India. I agree, I think it's difficult, between Peru and difficult. India. With his permission, I'm going to repeat what one of my viewers, James Valoria, so eloquently wrote to describe the outcome. He says, the show is structured in a way that leads us to believe there is a suspenseful buildup to the all important final question because Peru didn't win, we are left with unpleasant question marks. And these question marks effectively kill the magical allure of Miss Universe as a place where goodness reigns. The message conveyed is no matter how well you do, you still may not win or even come in second place. Thanks, James. By removing the opportunity for all semi-finalists to speak on stage on finals night and restricting it to the top five, there was a regression back to the Trump era, when non-verbal attributes took priority until the very final stages. What a shame it was to prevent excellent communicators such as Estefania Soto of Puerto Rico and Maria Thetil of Australia from speaking on the Miss Universe stage. So much for Miss Universe being a spokesperson, not a model. That concludes my coverage of the 69th Miss Universe. With the 70th anniversary pageant scheduled for late 2021, there's hopefully not too much time to wait. In the meantime, 
I'll get back to my beloved analysis and historical look at the world of pageants. So if you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this clip, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll be back soon with another video, but for now, it's goodbye from the pageant nerd.